Greetings and welcome everyone. We are ELT Techniques, also known as ELTT. I'm Jace, Jason Olivine, also known as Fluent CMC in New Jersey, 15 kilometers west of New York City in the place to be with all my good ELT friends like Nives from, where were you from Nives? I think I know, but uh, uh, Efron's from Mexico and he's here. Kyrgyzstan's in the house. Atlanta representing from Kyrgyzstan. Claudia from Argentina. It's midnight in Greece, the bewitching hour. Skilvia in the house. Yes, Nives is from Italia. Thank you, Efron. Uh, Vicky's here. Oh, Vicky Hallett, thank you for coming. It's so good to see you here. What other countries do we have represented here tonight? ELTs worldwide, where are you from? Maria from Brazil. <laughs> and then you're still here from Mexico. We have Isabel from Chile. Anybody else? Venezuela's in the house. Vanessa's here, that means Brazil is here. Macedonia. Yemen. <laughs> it's great to see everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Yes, Vicky is here, isn't that splendid? Vicky Holler, ladies and gentlemen, a VIP ELT, ES celebrity. We're all part of the ES celebration across many different nations. We are here because we have high motivation. I hope to give you inspiration. If I give you inspiration, you give it back to me. That's energy I give back to you because this is how we do, even though you can't really say that in English. This is how we do it, right? You can't see me, Claudia. I didn't do a video and a mic test. Can you hear me? Let me see some thumbs up, some claps. So good to ES celebrate with you, Vanessa, as always. Can you hear me? Enough people can hear me. How about see me? Larry's here. What's up, Larry? You can see me? That means if you can't see me or you can't hear me, I suggest refreshing the page. You may need to go out and come back in. We'll let you back in again. A fantastic shirt. Wow, thank you. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, I appreciate it. I'll have to wear something really nice and then I'll really blow your minds. Speaking of blowing minds, I think I used that idiom when I left the uh, pre-assignment uh, page. Amazing stuff going on there. I read every single word. Uh, really, really wonderful uh, stuff. And uh, thank you so much for participating there. And you know that if you did not participate there, you can do that later, anytime. Uh, we have until the end of the course next week to do post assignments. I'm going to give an extension on the ones for next week, obviously, because there will be time. We have some surprises in store for you, one of which you may have heard about a little bit in the post assignment, where I would say there's opportunity to present your work. So we're going to talk to you about that. How, if you'd like to, you don't have to, no pressure, want to keep you relaxed, <laughs> repeating and remembering, but if you are interested in the idea of presenting, perhaps with another, uh, with a colleague, with another participant, more on that to come. Sina can't uh, see me, or she can not see me, but hear me. Hmm. Barbara can see me now. Sounds like it's a connectivity issue, which we can't do too much about. Don't worry, we have the recording, and we have Sylvia, who is doing so much for this MOOC right now. She's getting the YouTube video made, and she's also uh, created a group, ELTT. So afterwards, if you want to chat with me on Facebook in the group, or if you prefer to stay on the class page in WizIQ, either way is fine. So many people here. I'm going to begin with a presentation, and during the presentation, I'm going to be asking you questions. So if you'd like to respond in the chat box, please do. We're talking about learning vocabulary with the three R's. Has anybody heard of the three R's? Not my three R's, but this three R's. Have you heard of this one before? Anybody? It might be a little strange to think three R's. That's where the R W A. The only thing I like about this three R's is it's a great way to teach the shrinking and linking, the, the rhythm and stress of English, right? And the, the crazy sounds and spellings. We don't say writing, right? The W is silent. And how about arithmetic? Do you get it? Why is arithmetic one of the R's? If you think about stress, 
in syllables? Do we say arithmetic? Right? It really reduces to arithmetic, right? It's very short schwa. I saw the schwa there uh, in the with the letter A is a schwa. So these are the three R's. Now I love when people say we need to go back to the three R's since I started my three R's because it's it's funny to me. Before that, it wasn't funny because the three R's, these three R's made me a little bit angry. Why do you think it made me angry, if you know a little bit about me, when someone says, we need to go back to the three R's in education? What are they saying? Any idea? We need to go back to the three R's. The problem with education today is not enough of the three R's. Only languages in math, and not even foreign languages, right? Your native language, math, and not what? We don't need art, we don't need foreign languages, we don't need music, right? We need to compete in the world, we need to train our students to grow up to be thinkers and doers, and they just need these basics, right? It's the back to basics idea. So none of us, I, I think, here believe that, we want our students to become critical thinkers, creative thinkers, and pretty much, it's very few people these days think like this, thankfully, right? Life has become uh, so, uh, in the 21st century, so many challenges that we need to think beyond this. But anyway, this was the original three R's. So sometimes I like to shock people with, I believe in the three R's. They say, what? And then I tell them, well, my three R's are relax, repeat, Remember, oh, I like that lateral thoughts, exactly. Lateral. <laughs> Reading, writing, arithmetic. Boom, boom, boom. Right? Stay in the box. Don't think outside of it. So uh, this comes, thank you, Sylvia, this comes from the R train in New York City. <laughs> That's the R train. Uh, relax, repeat, remember. Not just about fluency, but accuracy as well. We're going to talk about both of those. Uh, you probably... Uh, here and probably I hope think a lot about accuracy and fluency as language teachers and the balance that we need to reach uh, this is a little sneak preview I've got t-shirts coming up on the way just showing those here because I have uh, three different t-shirts one of them says relax repeat remember on them uh, these are done by my good friend who's in Korea he's actually from Ohio his name's Brian he's an English teacher and a designer and um, tell you a little more about those soon so those are the Relax, Repeat, Remember, 3 R's t-shirts. Have you ever heard this before? Can anybody tell me? Kids are like sponges? You have. <laughs> Instead of the certificate, you get the shirt. <laughs> okay, we'll have to talk about that. Who was that, Mariella? Uh, you've heard this before. What does it mean to you, kids are like sponges? Oh, until the age of six. Is six the magic number where we stop absorbing they absorb <laughs> great answers picking up language right to pick up water and a sponge or soak up they in a first language or in a second language or both when you're a kid both and not just language too right just knowledge in general both um, in what ways are they sponges why do you think? What can you tell us? How, if, it, if they really do, if kids really do suck up knowledge, they, they're playful, curious, so it has to do with their attitudes and their, their interest in learning. They copy behavior. The mind's more open. Look at these wonderful answers. Multi-sensory, multi-neurons. They pick up dirt. <laughs> Camille, that's priceless. Yes, they, they're picking up language, knowledge, and dirt and germs, bacteria. <laughs> Um, it's easier to memorize. They haven't been forced into a box yet. Ooh, that's... I like that one. I want to think about that one when we talk about, as adults, how to get out of the box, maybe. Their brains are shiny and new. So let's look at my list. You've, you've nailed a lot of these here. Their age, right? Someone said six years old. There's some magic age. Not sure about that, but... And actually, interestingly... Physiologists, neurologists are less sure now about the plasticity of the brain and all of this. There's actually a lot of debate about it. 
But certainly it's true that kids, because they're younger, have more malleable brains. But think about these other, um, these other variables because they're very important. And to me, to my mind, they are more important. And that is that when you're a child, still learning a first language, right, which is important here, you're getting so much input and you're getting repetitive input, right? It's not like an hour in the language classroom or the few times when you have a conversation in English, you know, at a store or on the phone if you're lucky, right? They're relaxed, right? And this is connected to interested and engaged and they can't think analytically. All the, the last parts are all really connected, aren't they? They're not worrying about can I learn this or not learn this when they're younger. As they get older and we put the box on them, right, they're more aware. But it's not just putting the box on them, to use this metaphor, but it's also that we develop cognitively, which is something very important, right? So the problem, however, maybe you've thought about this, and let's talk about vocabulary. We're going to get right into vocabulary with this. When you're, when you're a child and a new word comes and you you hear it enough times and you're not worrying about it right compare that to as you get older you stop to think well why is the word like that and let's go into second language acquisition what is that word in my language and is it the same does it translate the right way or it doesn't or how do i conjugate the verb or, right all of that is possible because you have higher level of cognitive development do we want to get rid of high levels of cognitive development? This is the paradox, isn't it? That we want to go up Bloom's taxonomy with our students. We want them to think critically, but if they're analyzing a lot, are they really going to acquire language the best way uh, that they can? So, uh, notice relaxed, interested, and engaged. It's really the same idea. We're going to get to that in a minute. Relaxed to me in the three R's does not mean go to sleep. <laughs> It's, it's very much connected to engagement. I don't know if anybody understand what I mean when I put this here. Probably no one. <laughs> That's okay. This is my, my idea I've been talking about a lot. Most students are neither farmers nor sailors. So let me explain. Uh, I had a show, I call the show, a class, a show called the Weekly English Workout with Fluent CNC, and that's going to come back when the time is right. And the idea is to be in a classroom and try to communicate and share opinions and all of that without being in shape, right? Without having a workout, without going to the gym, is not fair for students. They need that repetitive practice. They need to get strong, right? If you're a sailor, or you're a farmer, then you're already strong, right? You're already out there. You don't need to go to the gym, right? If you're a farmer or a sailor, you don't need to go to the gym, right? But how many of our students are farmers or sailors, meaning how many of our students are immersed in English, right? But these guys are immersed in exercise. If we're not immersed in practice, and then in the classroom, we're expected as learners to produce English, right? Very naturally, doesn't really work. Can we be like sponges when we learn a second language? How about as adults? After six years old, it's all over? Is it over? It is? <laughs> Stafa says yes. So if you're not, if you're over six years old, forget about learning a second language. You can't be a sponge. It's just harder. It's difficult for adults. <laughs> ah, the ones who enjoy it. We have a lot of roles as language teachers. But I would, I argue very strongly that the most important role, right, at the end of the day, the bottom line, to use idi two good idioms, right? We want to facilitate language acquisition, right? So to do that, we can't make our kids learn second language like a first language. Maybe it's too late. We can't have adults acting like children. But 
I have some questions here. Can we get large amounts of repetitive input? Is it possible? Can we be relaxed? Can we be interested and engaged? Can we be unconcerned with errors? Can we turn off our analytical brains? Lots of yeses here. I think so. And probably you've noticed this, right? You get a really engaging activity going with your students. And this starts to happen. They get more input because they're doing it more, right? They're relaxed and engaged. They're not noticing the errors as much, so they're, they're more fluent. And they're not analyzing, so they're more fluent. And as a result of all that input, they're also getting more accurate. Someone says, Elena says, I doubt the first. The first one's really tough, especially if you're in a country where you don't get enough English out, outside the classroom. It's true. It's true. But, and a big but, vocabulary development especially is easier now than at, more than ever because English is more accessible in interesting and engaging ways. And we are proof of that, right? This MOOC, this way that we're interacting, and many of us here are not native speakers, right? There's a lot of this going on, repetitive input, being relaxed and interested and engaged. And I'm very heartened by how many messages I'm getting from teachers saying how much what we're doing is helping their language development as, as second language speakers. So that's awesome for them and also what they can do with that uh, to help their students. So I talk about relax, repeat, remember. What do these words mean to you when you consider teaching and learning vocabulary? What do these words mean to you? I hear you, Amina. <laughs> You are not the only one. I'm not sure which country you're from, but uh, so many people are in the same boat. Not tense, lower effective filter. Love to see all the crashing knowledge in the uh, uh, on the page class page. Uh, we will definitely talk about crashing. Not today specifically, but in the group. Uh, I'm sure we'll get into that. Repeat. Practice. 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 Good. Ah, from Egypt. Yeah, I understand. But even in France, even in the United States, right, we have these problems, Amina. Good. Yes, in the U.S., of course, we have this problem. Uh, I really believe these problems are going to disappear the best way possible by themselves, not with some movement to let's make education entertaining. Uh, it's not going to happen that way. It's happening like most things do, <laughs> uh, finally, uh, on its own. It's sort of a transformation happening. I may be overly optimistic, but... I think it's going to happen that way. What do these words mean to you as a teacher when you plan and teach vocabulary activities? And let's talk about vocabulary specifically, although we could talk about anything here. Go with the flow. Do you think about when you plan and teach vocabulary, are my students going to be feel relaxed? Am I giving enough chance to see target language many times, repeat it so I can give them that basis? Recycling, good, things they enjoy, immersion as much as possible, not maybe immersion in their lives, but in that activity, if they're really into it and they're immersed, right? Good. Well, let's look at each of these in turn. I want to look first at being relaxed. Uh, this is a picture. I'm not sure where. I got it from uh, the Creative Commons, but that's definitely... Uh, an engaged group of kids in a classroom and what I wrote here is when we are relaxed we engage and when we are engaged we relax right so it seems also like another paradox right if you're relaxed you engage but the idea is even if you're relaxed like this right if you're really relaxed you're going to engage this is what you, what you do like just how much you can really uh, do things act on things more when you are relaxed and there's so much out there about this you know in psycholinguistics and in you know psychology uh, you don't need me to talk to you about why relaxing uh, means engagement um, what relaxes and engages your learners I see confidence right I haven't mentioned confidence I haven't mentioned motivation I see those things coming up here those are kind of the result right you're motivated, you're confident as a result, songs and movies, awesome. 
favorite topics. Yeah, get to know what they like. Even if the textbook's boring, the textbook's going to hit on some areas, you know, sports, music, movies, and you can go from there and make activities yourself or use activities like mine and other people on the internet to supplement, right? That's the idea, right? We're not going to throw away the textbook unless we can. <laughs> uh, we're going to supplement it in ways to make it better. Educational games. Good. Some students like grammar. It's true. Some like, so maybe some students, right? You can get in groups that have different roles. One person's really good at this, so they have that role. You know, they're the scribe, or, or they're the one that has to think about the grammar. Someone else is performing the song, other people just reading the lyrics, right? So learning styles, figuring out who your learners are. If you can, no pressure about grades. Sometimes that's really tough, right? If in a school, Sometimes, you know, you have to do what you can, right? Well, you always have to just do what you can, I think. How about <clears throat> repetition? Oh, I love surveys. Love surveys. What do you think of these pictures? <laughs> Too stiff. Are they both too stiff? I think the first picture is, is pretty clear they're stiff. The second one, it's interesting. I think the second one can be interpreted either way, couldn't it? To me, the second one, the boy playing the piano, Frozen, he could be really focused, yeah, and he could be really engaged, couldn't he? Or he could be stressed and it's not, he doesn't, he hates the piano, it's interesting. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> well, repeating, repetition, when I was learning to be a teacher, that word had a lot of negative connotation. Why do you think repetition might be bad or repetition, you know, repeating things, drilling, right? Like the dentist, drilling, no. But it could be boring. That's right. Repetition is good. Repetition is bad. Repetition is boring. Repetition is fun. It's dull. It has to be motivating. Good. Vanessa says it has to be motivating, whatever it is. Some people might be motivated doing flashcards. And others, no way. Some people might be motivated repeating sentences on the board. You might actually relax, kind of like, oh, I like the part where we just, you know, we just pair it and we go back. Other people, forget it. So it's back to, you know, we need to figure out. To me, here it is. There is no way to get around repetition. If you try to build communicative competence and you try to teach target language vocabulary and you're not doing enough repetitive practice in some way or another, you can't expect your students to have that language. You all know how many times do you have to see a vocabulary word to remember it. And I hate that because see a word, what about the collocation or the context, but you know what I mean. Whatever it is, how many times you have to you know, meet the word again and again, you need that. We're not, they're not native speakers, right? So we're, you're not going to get that naturally. It has to be some kind of unnatural ooh, repetition with a purpose. I'll shut up and just read what you're saying because it's better. Make it lively and motivating. No money, no honey. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I'm not totally sure what you mean. China do not like repetition. Good for them, Larry, because I feel like there's a society where they've taken that so far that it's great that people now are starting to question it. Oh, wait a second. And uh, ironically, places like China, Korea is another example. They're now so much more interested in building critical thinking that they may be in really good situation because the students have a lot of foundational knowledge as opposed to people in me who often have very little foundational knowledge and then we try to make them critical thinkers and that doesn't work. So I don't like the word repetition always. I like words like multiple exposures, you know, uh, <clears throat> practice, this kind of thing. But let's let's talk about the piano for a moment. I have a question for you about the piano. If you see a boy like this or a girl or an adult practicing, you know, I don't know, Beethoven's Sonata over and over again. 
Do you think, God, that's terrible. That's, that's, that's not what you do. That's not creative. You're just repeating, repeating, repeating the same thing. Is that how, is that how it feels? Now I'm thinking about someone who likes playing Beethoven. Should that person try playing Beethoven Sonata a little bit differently this time? And this time, maybe my hand goes here this time, and then this time. That's crazy, right? How about running a race? Let's say you're running a hundred meter race. So you're training and your coach is helping you how your body moves, right? Does the coach tell you, okay, sometimes run this way, sometimes run this way, be creative, do it differently. But do we say running a hundred meters, that's not creative. You know, that's not, that's not good. That's not good learning. You know, or 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 do it, or playing the piano should never be you know, repeated this way because that's not created. That that's not nobody says those things, right? But how about language building, especially vocabulary and grammar? How about that, right? We need to do, I would argue very strongly, something very similar, right? You've got, you've got to enjoy it. If you're running the 100 meters and you've got a coach and you hate running, forget it. You hate the piano, forget it, right? <laughs> but we need to build, we need to build with repetition. I told this story in my last class, but as you may know, if you saw the last class, my PowerPoint was too big, which was my fault, shame on me. And I couldn't really talk about this uh, with the slides. So I just wanted to go back to it because it's, it's relevant to what we're talking about here. I had a student in a class long time ago, or oh, four years ago maybe, something like that. I said, you know, I always, and the student said, Coca-Cola. Do you know why the student said Coca-Cola? And maybe you know because you've seen my class before, or maybe you're old like me and you know that Coca-Cola had a slogan, always Coca-Cola. Now this student, this student had very low vocabulary knowledge. So she didn't have collocations with always, <clears throat> but she knew always Coca-Cola as a collocation. Why? Why did she have that right? She said, always Coca-Cola. Boom, she had it. They remember the slogan, the repetition, the commercials over and over. She picked it up, the rhythm of it, maybe in the commercial. Good, the advertisements watching TV. So we got the repetition in there. Definitely the remember in there. What about the relax? Nobody's talking about relaxed. Was she studying this collocation? Did I tell her to memorize it? Was it homework? She wasn't studying. <clears throat> the exposure, the repeated exposures without the studying. No test, no exam, and where, and nobody told her what to do, right? She just got it. And how was she feeling when she heard this on the radio? Or she saw that on TV? How was she feeling when she was on the bus? In probably what, right? Probably she was relaxed. She was just on the bus in a daydream and there was always Coca-Cola. Maybe just subconsciously, right? Well, that's what happens so often. When we just do it in Kentucky Fried Chicken. Gloria's got it, and Gloria, I'll thank you. Instead of spoiling it, you're helping me move along so we can do it up tonight. So I said, well, you know what? I'm going to test some other ones out, like just. Just do it. Nike. Exactly. And the last one, my favorite story, Japanese student, low level, just arrived in the United States. We're looking at a map of the United States not to do any crazy vocabulary stuff, right? Very low level, just, you know, we are in New York, here is California, right? And he saw Kentucky Fried Chicken. He was so happy, Kentucky Fried Chicken. This person had no idea that Kentucky was a state, right? He was just happy, as I think all of us know, if you've worked with collocations, he had that feeling of, right? Goes together, right? Like, like magnets. Boom. Just do it. Kentucky Fried Chicken. So, 
I'm glad it's not available in your in your countries. Oh, horrible stuff, right? So um, these students, I would argue, are learning by heart. For me, learning vocabulary by heart is different from memorizing vocabulary. I don't mind if you say memorize, but for me, the distinction is important. If you memorize something, you are trying to put it in to remember it. And in not in every case, but in many cases, this raises your stress level. And in many cases, you don't remember it. How many of you remember poems, songs, stories by heart from when you were very little? Right? Now, did you memorize those? I have to learn this lullaby my grandmother's singing. I have to learn this poem that uh, uh, my mother's reading to me. So I think very strongly it's like the always Coca-Cola. Nobody told you to do it. You're relaxed and you hear it again and again or you see it again and again. That's learning by heart. Such a better way to think, I feel, about remembering than memorization. Did my students have these collocations? Always late, always tired, always in a good mood? No, just always Coca-Cola. Just a second, just in time, just a friend? These collocations? They didn't. So here I am thinking, I know how to build vocabulary. Collocations, repeated exposure, in fun ways. This is the secret. Not to all vocabulary learning, but to jumpstart it and to keep that strategy going, to build the, the foundation, right? And then from there to sentences, from there to thinking at higher level in, in the second language. <laughs> Just, Justin Bieber, right? <laughs> you know, I was, I was joking calling him Beaver, and it turns out I think Bieber is in uh, German is Beaver. Because he's got the beaver, it looks like he's got a dead beaver on his head. Um, <laughs> listen music or listen to music? How about in Spanish? And Portuguese? Escuchar la musica, escuchar la musica. In French, écouter la musique ou écouter à la musique. Écouter de la musique. Ah, merci Amina, je parle pas très bien en français. Surtout les prépositions. Need to have more collocation practice. What I'm saying here is true for any chunk of vocabulary, whatever it is. Right? The brain only cares about what sounds right and looks right, full stop. Now, is that all language learning is? No. Okay, so I'm not reducing. Please, please don't leave here tonight. Jason's reducing language learning to just, you know, what looks right and sounds right. It's much more than that. But at the fundamental level, it is not more than that. And we know that when we see and hear mistakes, kick me. Right? So if my daughter says so many stuffs, she doesn't make that mistake in the future because nobody says so many stuffs. She hears so much stuff, so much stuff, so much stuff, right? So, <clears throat> what matters at the vocabulary level, especially, right, is getting enough exposure in a way that you will remember what sounds right and looks right. Gerunds and infinitives, great example of that. We're going to talk about that song coming up. To do so, the brain needs sufficient repetitive input and one more thing. We must be relaxed and engaged. I had European history class in ninth grade. Does European history class sound interesting? Maybe boring? However, I was lucky. The teacher was great. <clears throat> Mrs. Fahey. You always remember the best teacher's names and the worst teacher's names and no one else. Do you agree with that, by the way? <laughs> so, Miss Fahey, so I, I probably remember, you know, elementary school, middle school, high school, you know, 
six, seven teachers' names, that's it. All right? The good ones. And then a few of the bad ones, although we try to forget those too. <clears throat> she was a great teacher. The content was interesting because she made it interesting, right? I mean, history is interesting if, if you make it interesting, right? If you're, if you're an engaging teacher. I studied like crazy because I wanted to please her, myself, my parents. I got an A. Sound good? There was just one problem. What happened to the third R? <laughs> True story. <laughs> there are many examples of this which, to my mind, mean that of the three R's, right, or of the two first R's, relax, repeat, it's really relaxing that's the most important because why did I remember nothing? <laughs> she was too cute. No, not exactly. She was an older woman, let's say that. I did repeat enough. I did repeat. I had flashcards. I repeated. I repeated. I boom, 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 repeated. What did I not do? I didn't enjoy it. I was so stressed. I wanted to succeed. Oh, I also didn't use it. Vicky's got a point there. Didn't use it. What I did at the time was study really hard. It was kind of meaningful. I, I agree with not using it and meaningful are important. But I'm going to show you why I think I don't remember this mainly because of the stress. What I would do is I would cram all this information into my head that I needed to do, learn, and then do well on the test. But then to relax, what would I do? Watch TV. And what was on TV? Well, shows and commercials. And the commercials, did they repeat them? Are you usually trying to study the commercial? It's back to the always Coca-Cola thing again. So, these commercials are ancient, but I remember all of them. Are you ready? I'm going to do a little performance. First one is Crave Cat Food. My kitty cat craves chicken. My kitty cat craves milk. My kitty cat craves tuna, so my kitty cat craves crave, yeah, my kitty cat craves crave. I remember that stupid cat food commercial, but I don't remember how World War I started, or if I try to think about it, I get nervous and stress. Earworms. This little boy here, that's for Oscar Mayer bologna commercial. <laughs> you, some of you know the bologna commercial, maybe. My bologna has a first name. It's O-S-C-A-R. My bologna has a second name. It's M-E-Y-E-R. Oh, I love to eat it every day. And if you ask me why, I'll say. Because Oscar Mayer has a way with B-O-L-O-G-N-A. I haven't heard that commercial, honestly. I have not, and I didn't cheat and go to YouTube and listen to it. I haven't heard that commercial for 25 years. Maybe longer. 28 years. So I don't need to repeat it. It's in my head already. <laughs> what do the advertisers know that we don't? We know, same thing now, <laughs> with language learning. You just got to be relaxed and repeat and you'll remember. How about Big Red? So kiss a little longer, press your breath a little longer, keep your get that uh, breath long lasting freshness, longer with Big Red. That Big Red freshness runs right through you. Your fresh breath goes on and on while you're chewing. Say goodbye a little. I mean, this is great. I, I know three verses of this song. I haven't even tried to do it, but if... I know it. Jingles. And Big Mac, Big Red is chewing gum. Big Red. See, it's bigger than the little, little chewing gum. And by the way, this is not just songs. And because you were so gracious to check out, I'm not going to, I'm going to focus on the fact that this is not just about songs. Not. So the Big Mac one is not a song. <clears throat> Plus, I can remember things like, check this out. I swear to God, you have to trust me. Totally true. I've never thought about this before. Big Red. Uh, big Red. Uh, more flavor than this little cinnamon gum does not stand up to the big fresh, the big, big red freshness of Big Red cinnamon. Like, I have, it's not just the songs. 
It's what they're saying. It's still in my head. Then we can't say, oh, well, I'm not teaching my kids to sing English. Or, I understand. But it's not just that, right? <clears throat> it's the relaxing and the repeating and engagement, whatever the input is. Rhythm, rhyme, make it even better with music, I feel, and many of you probably understand that. But it's not just about that. How about the, um, the Big Mac? Big Mac is to all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. To all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Sounds like I've been like rehearsing it to be in the commercial. Thank you, Melissa. I'm not, that's just permanently stuck in my head. <laughs> Don't be scared, Maria. What you do is you do the same thing with your students and then they walk around with the irregular verbs in their head or they walk around with <clears throat> noun clauses in their head, modal verbs in their head. And you do it with the collocations and especially with rhymes and rhythm and songs makes it even happen even more. And you can do it with the textbook too. You just pull the stuff out of the textbook. I'm telling you. Or you go and you find things that I'm doing and other people are doing. This, these are two, uh, I know some Burger King Whopper, <laughs> and you know, I didn't even watch that much TV compared to the average American kid, so just imagine, well anyway, these two pictures, this is me, not me really, but that's me studying for world history, or European history, and that's me <laughs> relaxing, of course, that's not, I wasn't quite that fat, uh, and I wasn't quite that old when I was in high school. So I decided when I had this experience, uh, and some of you in my other class about collocations, you know, I, I knew collocations were the building blocks, but how can I get them really stuck in their head? And I thought, I've got to figure out what students like to do again and again and again, right? What do they like to repeat? So because I was a hip hop DJ, I played drums, I DJ <clears throat> music, that was a natural thing for me. I am not here to say you have to use music and certainly you don't have to use my material. What are some other ways <clears throat> that we can build vocabulary with the three R's? So some of you mentioned this earlier uh, today in, in the class, some of these here. The key is what are the things your learners naturally wanted, want to repeat? And to help you, here's a, a list, but we could add to this list. Whatever, you know, like I said, some people like, <clears throat> some people like to repeat sentences from the board. Uh, some people, you know, it, whatever it is, right? We need to assess their needs and interests, figure that out. So along the way, we're always doing activities where we're giving them target language again and again, instead of pressuring them to, why aren't you using this vocabulary? We learned it, remember? No, they didn't really learn it. <clears throat> Movies, watching a whole movie, there's some great things you can do with it, but oh my goodness, scenes from movies and, and TV shows, and let me give you an example of what I mean, because I, of course, many people know that movies and TV shows are good for teaching, <clears throat> but let me give you an example uh, of what I'm talking about. If you watch, if you, let's say the television show, I don't know, Friends, right? A lot of you know, know about Friends, so okay, <clears throat> if you have an episode of Friends, and there's a conversation between two people on the show, friends. And in that conversation, one of them says, you know, we just need to work out our problem. So there's that phrasal verb, work out your problem. If you're watching that show and you hear that or you see the subject, that might be nice, but you're probably not going to really learn that without hearing it more. So if you're a native speaker, you're gonna hear it everywhere. What you can do with a scene, especially with dictation and other things, is give give the students right reason to wanna to hear it again, right? If you play it for them many times, right? If you just say, we're gonna, we're gonna watch this and listen to the same scene <clears throat> 45 times, that's crazy because that's like telling them what to do and there's no goal, there's no fun. But if you have, a fun and engaging activity and they repeat it enough then guess what it gets stuck in their head so if you're choosing scenes that have really cool vocabulary or vocabulary you need to teach because it's in your textbook right so I don't know kitchen vocabulary or job vocabulary or whatever you can try to repeat scenes 
where they have uh, <clears throat> where that vocabulary is used and then do an activity and this is something you could do for the post assign assignment do an activity that engages them so much that they have to repeat and they want to repeat music videos poems and stories yeah get them stick stuck stuck conversation role plays conversation role plays great example <clears throat> you could have a conversation role play from the book and you just read it we're done no if you repeat it do it funny voices different ways do it again do it again do it again then it gets stuck up here got to be motivated got to be engaged <clears throat> so not just repeating the same stupid role play right a role play <clears throat> that's funny a role play maybe they write themselves and you correct dress up that's right depending on the age of the students but adults like to do stuff like that too skits and plays right you could take the, the role play and, and make it into something more of a performance oral presentations have the opposite kind of thing not conversation you know not not fun maybe <clears throat> a report on something uh, about holidays about your country about uh the uk united states whatever right about sports if you have to read it again and again to put it up here and it's meaningful and interesting right that's what it is it's think about actors we talked about piano we talked about running uh, the hundred meters oh, well, how about actors reading their scripts they're reading them again and again and they're looking at them again and again until it's here right like lyrics of songs you can do this with your students also right and it's gonna stick and then you give them activities where they can produce it and guess what comes out and it comes out accurately and fluently most of the time if they've done a lot of repetition with it and of course if what they repeated was correct so that's another thing I'm, we're assuming that what you're using is, is going to be the way we use the vocabulary uh, authentically games last but not least of course I started what I do with this with games card games right repeating with card games uh, with collocations I'm going to have those available I hope soon those collocation card games collar cards lots of different games and you guys have lots of your own ideas uh, just a little hint about the assignment it will be thinking of some way you can use repetition to build vocabulary in an engaging way so something from here or something of your own yeah the collar cards you'll like them whether you use music or not you know I want to make something clear or my music some people are kind of shy in the uh, pre-assignment saying like I'm not sure I like this song as much or maybe my students wouldn't like rap music that's fine you know please you know I, I, I am not uh, I don't do what I do because I think everyone should use my stuff what, this is what I think we all need to do you learn without looking when you stop feeling bored and stressed having fun is when you learn the best right learn without looking what's the idea here learn without looking doesn't have to be rap <laughs> playing a game any of those things that we we were just talking about right you're not trying to learn you have to learn this <clears throat> you're not you're not studying it for the test maybe you have a test right but you're doing something so engaging because right you're not stressed and you're having fun yeah fool good example Nives. football fans right like the kid who can't do anything in school always oh, such a bad student but he's got all that information about every player on the football club I love it exactly I love lots of different ideas not just songs because you know I work with the songs and the card games there's so many examples of learning when you're not looking How many of you have heard of the audio lingual method? How about communicative language teaching? Oh, I like that Thomas Wacky word association. <laughs> same with technology. Arguably, this is the same with anything, right? Relax, repeat, remember. As a learning, uh, so the audio lingual method. I, I was taught that you know these were these were the bad guys, right? <laughs> we're we're making you into a communicative language teacher what was good about audio lingual? there was a lot of input and repetition but and a big but right 
dull, dry, right? Out of context, not meaningful for students, right? Those dialogues in my French books, which I remember some of, which shows you, even though it was dull, <laughs> that's st stuck up here. Like the big red commercial is not really interesting either, is it? So like, uh, allo, Delphine, ici Alain. Comment ça va? Oh, il neige? Chic. Allons-y dans le jardin. It's snowing? Great. Let's go out, out in the yard. Do I need to say that when I'm in Paris? Usually? So that's stuck. That's stuck. But I don't have the functional language stuck. I don't have the... I'm back in English, Elena. Don't worry. I don't have the really useful English up here from my French classes because my French classes were audiolingual. You can make audiolingual more meaningful, but often it's not. It's easy to lose motivation. Communicative approach? Kind of the converse. Often interesting and meaningful. Let's talk about what you feel about this, or let's agree and disagree. Let's let's talk about you know uh, your favorite food, right? And let's put the language in context and target language. Good functional language. But wait a second. If we're not going to repeat it, if we're not going to get enough exposure to it, how am I going to communicate, <laughs> right? So easy to lose motivation. Same thing. Do you know this idiom? To throw the baby out with the bathwater? I'll teach you the idiom if you don't know it. The idea is, right, if you're giving a baby a bath and you throw out the dirty water, you don't want to throw out the baby. It's the same in French. Yeah, maybe in your language it might, might have a similar idiom. Don't throw the good out with the bad, someone said. Yeah, Sharon said, it's getting rid of the good with the bad. What did audiolingual, what did communicative approach do with audiolingual? I strongly feel what they did was to say, and this is not fair, let me, let me slow down here, <laughs> because when I trained and got my CELTA, they didn't say drilling was bad. They didn't say repetitive repeating was bad. They did not. But I'm an old guy. I feel that since then, and I'm not direct criticizing CELTA, but very often, and this is mostly true with teachers that are trained in the communicative approach, but they don't really go through programs as good as CELTA and the good TESOL programs. But even in good programs, you often see people saying, you know, it's more about the students' meaningful communication and then they're not really thinking about the fact that without enough repetition, without enough, whatever way you do it, I don't want to go back to boring audiolingual drills, right? But if you, what about thinking of more creative ways to provide repetitive practice? That's what, to me, it's all about with vocabulary building. This is uh, from a song I wrote about the geography of uh, Central and South America, and it illustrates what I'm trying to say. Let's build a base to support higher thought and hold on to all of the things that we're taught. Because what happens with vocabulary is you need that base of knowledge, right? If you're going to make sentences with vocabulary words, if you are going to think critically in a second language, if you're going to do anything beyond the knowledge level, you need to have enough knowledge. And in English language learning, or language learning in general, but we're talking about English, it's really those collocations that make the building blocks. So, as Bloom said 50 years ago, recall. I love that word recall. We haven't talked about that today. Repeating. Re can you recall? Boom. Automatically. So I've got, I've got the big red commercial. Recall. Alright? My student had always Coca-Cola. Recall. Alright? But what about the chunks of vocabulary that are more important to build uh, proficiency in English? Uh, I'm just going to read this quickly. Actually, I'm not going to read this because of the time. This PowerPoint will be available. This is sort of what I do with, with my method, or not method, approach, not a method. I'm going to end with this, and then we're going to do a little bit of music. When you relax, you can mix and match this one. You, when you relax and enjoy your time, it's easy to learn with rhythm and rhyme. Or when you relax with rhythm and rhyme, you can kind of play around with this. 
Yeah, lots of thanks to Vanessa I see in here. Vanessa is the Kahlo Queen. You might know her as Kahlo, the Kahlo Queen. Uh, Sylvia, Skilvia is, is the Kahlo, I don't know, are you the, the Kahlo matriarch? We've got all these, we've got some serious Kahlo people in the house. And as you've seen, uh, many of our presenters themselves uh, either start right out with chunks and collocations or, or they bring them in somewhere, right? So I, I wanted to talk about, oh, the Kahlo poetess. Ooh, yes. Love it. Kahlo poetess. Um, I want to show you something. And I'm going to message um, uh, Raman, who's, who's in India. Raman, if you're there, I want if you could extend the class, please. Uh, we'll do 15 minutes just so we can get some music in here. And some, uh, some people have been asking for that. And if we can get that extension. Oh, we got it already. Beautiful. So if you have to leave, you can leave, but you'll have the recording too. So I want to talk about this song. It's a chant, and I'd like to do it without music. And do it slowly, because I think some people uh, get the feeling, well, I don't really like rap, or my students don't, or I can't rap in class. Well, first of all, you don't have to rap in class to use my material. Hello, that's the whole point. You don't have to be uh, the person on the conversation CD. Right, so that's that's for me to do and you to help, you know, engage students. If you want to rap with me, I love it, but you don't have to rap. Uh, but you may not want to use music. It doesn't have to be music. A lot of it is just the rhythm and the repetition. So I'm going to do it. I will sing it, but I'm going to do it slowly as a chant. So it goes like this: Washington was first, and there have been 43 cents. Kahlo was we Kahlo, the United States president. Washington, Adams, Jefferson, and Madison. The lyrics form a pattern when you listen and listen again. Monroe, Adams, Jackson, and Van Buren. Up in your brain, it's burning, discerning your Kahlo learning. Harrison, Tyler, Polk, and Taylor know your history. You'll be a passer, not a failure. Fillmore, Pierce. Buchanan and Lincoln. When the facts of Lincoln, they sink in and get you thinking. Washington was first, and there have been 43 since. Follow was we followed the United States president. Johnson, Grant, Hayes, Garfield, and Arthur. Kahlo was spark to get farther and farther. Cleveland, Harrison, and Cleveland again. He was elected twice, stranger. Build your knowledge now and you'll be happy in the end. McKinley, Roosevelt, Taft, and Wilson. This is for the big folks, not only for the children. Harding, Harding, Coolidge, Hoover, Roosevelt, and Truman. Fluency and C, you'll get your brain cells moving. Washington was first and there have been 43 cents. Follow was we call the United States presidents. And there's another one, another page to this. Uh, goes all the way to Obama and I have a newer version in a video for this. This is the old version. I'm glad you like it. A rap training session? I would love to do that. We have some time maybe to do some extra classes. Uh, this one was part of the homework. I want to do this one, the whole song, and what I really want to tell you about uh, that's important about this song and, and most of my songs. Some people say, oh, it's too long. Well, I agree it's long, but you don't have to do it all at once. You pause the video, you pause the, the song, you do little bits, you could cut it up and information gaps and, you know, God, you guys have so many ideas, I'm sure what you could do with this song. And, you know, if you're teaching 50 minutes and you're using the textbook, then you can't do something like this uh, in, one, in one time. But they can also do it more and more now at home with the mp3s with the videos uh with so there's a there's a lot of and remember if you're doing little bits that's good right it's that's how language is learned you don't have to do the whole thing at once this one is conveniently divided between right verb plus infinitive complements in yellow and verb plus gerund complements in green with two different speakers right in context in a story i want to do it for you live and do it uh with a slower beat, not too slow, but a little slower, because the one I did in that song is right. I did that on purpose. I wanted a sort of a higher level song uh, for this one. 
uh, because I have so many higher level students who don't know their gerunds and infinitives. So this is me this was meant especially for the video. Steal it, steal it, share it everywhere. You're supposed to do that. Uh, this is uh, this is good for different levels if you slow it down uh, and you do it in bits and pieces, right? So yeah, it's pretty easy to steal because I posted it in courseware, so it's it's there for you. That's the whole point. Right? Share it, share it. So I'm going to play um, an instrumental you may know of. Uh, you ever heard of a singer called Rihanna? By any chance, Rihanna? Rihanna? Anybody? Rihanna? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know you mostly know who Rihanna. Is. Some of you don't know who Rihanna. Is. Uh, you might not know this Rihanna song. This is an instrumental version of the song. Can you tell me if that's too loud or if that's too soft? It's okay. Man down. That's right, it's man down. I'm glad you love this song. This song was banned in my country, if you can believe it, but that's another story. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Colin with Spark on the ELT show. Last night I was bored, so I decided to call my friend Paul. He arranged to see a movie at the mall. I intended to meet him at his apartment at 8. I meant to be on time, but I was late. He had to wait. I hoped to find that he wasn't upset, but he seemed to be vexed that I neglected to text. We hurried to make it, and we managed to arrive in time, but there were tons of people standing in line. We attempted to get in, but we failed to get tickets for the show. It had sold out, wouldn't you know? Volunteered to buy lunch because I felt bad. He hesitated to accept. He was mad. He suggested that I offer to fill up his car, but I refused to go along. He was taking this too far. I said, Let's meet halfway at the cafe. I'll pay, and then I promised to buy gas on another day. He struggled to believe me. I claimed to be sincere, but it's true. My money often tends to disappear, but I pretended to care because I needed him to share his car. The next week, I was preparing to speak at a wedding where my friend would be the bride. And Paul has sworn to agree to give me a ride. I can't afford to buy a car, pay to settle my debts. I'd like to save up money, I just haven't done it yet. I plan to build my skills, I'm going to learn to pay bills. I can't wait to earn what I deserve to earn. When I choose to get rich, I have money to burn. All right, now Paul's gonna respond. Here we go, Paul. I enjoy hanging out with my friend Mike, but I just like having to wait. I can't tolerate always being late to a show and then lending him dough, and I resent him and told. Oh, well, Paul, you know I'll be your back what I owe, and I anticipated being on time. I'm a flexible guy, and normally I don't mind being a bit behind schedule, but with Mike, it's getting crazy. He's a bum, he's a mooch. It denies being lazy. He avoids telling the truth and never Never ceases to amaze me. Time and time again, I resist saying yes to his plans. I can't understand the man wanting this life. I keep telling him, consider one day having a wife. Do you imagine having fun and being a nice to suffice? But he doesn't appreciate hearing my advice. I recall recommending his writing exam. He mentioned buying a notepad, but I never see him carrying it around. We discussed setting the alarm on his phone. He said he couldn't help forgetting it at home. Does a person have to practice growing up to quit acting like a kid? I miss doing all the things I did as a teen. But postpone being an adult. I mean, Mike's like a brother to me at the end of the day. I'd never risk losing his friendship. So I'm finished saying here's what to do. And I suggest doing that. I just hope that he picks up the clock and sets on track. <laughs> you got on track with Chase? I hope so. And I hope you can chase with haste all the lyrics as I said I'm not too fast. If you think it's amazing that I gotta clap my hands and say it at last. I got a group of VLTs with me, all of us together. All kinds of seasons and weather around the world we come together. Yes, it's awesome. And the song we repeat. What we do is not compete, but collaborate, putting it together. Bravo to me, bravo right back at you, giving me the energy to do what I do. All right, thank you so much, everybody. 
thank you so much. Thanks for being uh, being here live in the class. That's exciting for me as a teacher uh, to do that. And uh, uh, this song, I, there's also, you know, you could do it even slower and you could do it just, right, in a chant or just reading the story, right? Last night I was bored, so I decided to call my friend Paul. We arranged to see a movie at the mall. I intended to meet him at his apartment at 8. Drama, good, let's get some ideas. Let's say you hate rap, your students hate rap, it's too fast, it's this, it's that. What else could you do with this content? Because you can take it and do anything you want with it. I need some water. Thank you, Claudia. I got some. Thanks for reminding me. I, I, I would have forgotten. Yes, Gloria, I will be at Tiso Portman next year. I'm actually uh, chair of the video and digital media interest group, so I have to be there. Uh, I will be there. I'll also be at Mexi in uh, Mexico City for Mex Tiso. I'm giving a keynote in Mexico uh, in October, uh, November, November, and I may be going to Russia. I uh, just found out, but I'm not sure yet. And I've, I've got to go to Argentina. I think Argentina is my biggest fan base, especially the last couple of weeks on YouTube. Everybody's from Argentina on YouTube now. Uh, Turkey, definitely too. <laughs> we, we only have a few minutes, and I wanted to, I made a promise. Uh, sponsor me, I'm coming. Seriously, though. If you, especially Argentina and Brazil, if you, because I have a lot of people there that are following me, if you think you can find a sponsor, uh, just let me know. I'm ready. I'm ready. This year, we're going to be traveling a lot. Uh, South America is high up on the list. So, uh, what I wanted to do, Ramon, are you still there? Is I wanted to play a video. Ramon's got it in the, um, I think, in the class. And the reason I want to play the video, and then we may have to extend a few more minutes, maybe not, uh, is a few people were asking me about idiom videos, and we had a great thing with Shanti with idioms. Uh, Idea talked a lot about idioms. So I wanted to show you a video that I made with idioms. And let me just see. And here it is. So afterwards, I just want to go back to that relax, repeat, remember, and see how you think you can use the video. Let me get it on. And then we'll say goodbye. And then the last class I have in this course is all about the problem to So if you want, we'll wrap it up. see my what it takes. I'm a go-getter. People do as I do, I'm a trendsetter So follow what I say, hooks lead to the letter Think they know more, but they don't know better It's back to back action, I'm a double header I don't get ill, I'm never under the weather I fly really high, I'm as light as a lead to the letter Hang on to your hats and let's rise together we're second to none. Two heads are better than one. So have fun when you learn is as easy as pie. It's a piece of cake. It's a snack. Don't be shy. I think we see eye to eye. As a matter of fact, to be exact, we're on the track. No looking back. No, not at all. Not no at all. We're on the bus. I know better double header. We ride together. Job done. Second to nerd. If two heads are better than one, have fun. Easy as pie. A piece of cake. Don't be shy. Don't get a Come on, let's go, let's get this show underway No pain, no pain, nothing fiction, nothing gain When the going gets tough, the tough get going AMP influency, check out the party we're throwing All that glitters isn't gold, but we got the Midas touch That's what's up, you can bet we keep perching up in the clutch We shift into high gear, we persevere Far and near, loud and clear, never fear. We're, We're here to rock our hemispheres. hemispheres, get the show underway. No 
pain, no gain It's a-okay, nothing ventured, nothing gained Raise your voice, loud and clear Keep your chin up, have no fear, persevere All right, thank you. I'm glad you liked the visuals. I have many, many more videos like that uh, with LT Funk. That one actually is just with AMP, Alex Patinsky. There's also other videos. I know you've uh, seen a couple of them, uh, some of you. Um, for example, uh, Don't You Know, that one. And many more coming. Uh, why? Because you guys support them and watch them, and that's how I'm going to be able to keep keep doing them. So we just have a few minutes left. Uh, before we say goodbye, what do you think about idioms with Relax, Repeat, Remember? I'm glad you like Don't You Know. I love that song too. Idioms we talked about with Shanti really hard because it's hard to catch them. It's hard to get enough exposure to them. Anything you would do with a video like this? By pausing it or having students write or speaking? Anything come to mind? They are difficult. Sometimes we, if we talk about how difficult they are, and I'm guilty of this too, they become even more difficult. Images, absolutely. <laughs> you run out of ideas. Luckily, Claudia, you've got, I know you've got lots of ideas, so even if you don't have them right now. Prepare a lesson around it. Yeah, the, visual, the visuals and the audio, and this is why people... Language teaching and learning is just about to explode because textbooks don't have, you know, put on the cassette. And, you know, it's it's all about audio visuals, and you know that's what television is, media, internet. So you know, we're 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 about to you know be fully immersed in a renaissance of language language learning, driven by the learners, uh, which can be scary for some of us. But if you're a good teacher, I think good teacher, you you like the idea of learners driving it. Uh, personalize the idioms explain the meaning then listen to the song lots of flipping you can do right present the stuff first in a kind of traditional way then watch watch and then go back and do it good okay any questions today about anything related to the presentation we've got a couple, couple more minutes I had so much fun today it was really really great <laughs> really having a blast with you guys so I hope you I hope you enjoyed it. Multimedia bringing language to life and bringing education to life. Kala learning forever. Thank you. That's right. It's a Kala word world. That's what we're saying. Yeah, colonize the world. That's what the the Kala poetess said. If you gotta go, bye bye. I'm glad it was fun for you. If you got a question. You can ask me, you can ask me anytime. I'll be here, usually with Ryan, to give it to you so we can all climb up the ladder to success, to the top, maybe with some hip hop. No matter what, we don't stop. Just two more weeks. But you know what? I got some special treats, some surprises in store. I gotta have to give you some more. And then after the MOOC is done, oh, there's the Facebook group. Yes, we're gonna meet at Facebook. After the group is done, a list of all my videos, sure, playlists, I'll just throw them up everywhere. And by the way, next week, uh, the last class I do with Kalo Tunes as the focus, I'm going to put lots of lyrics and lots of stuff up for you guys. Don't worry, lots of things for you. And uh, the other thing is, I, I'm not going to give it away now, but let's just say that there may be a chance to do something like this MOOC again. But before that, we still have another week, and then after that week, there's going to be some opportunity to present. So not next week, but the last week, uh, not the last week, the fifth week, right, which is not included in the syllabus. Uh, but we will, I'm not going to tell you anything about what's coming up after vocabulary, but you'll like it. Um, and as usual, some of you have time. 
That doesn't matter, right? That's the whole point. We don't stress out. We do what we can. All right. 